I tried so hard and got so far, but in the end, it doesn't even matter. Life sucks. You're never going to get what you want. It's no use in trying. Every day we wake up and we have one important decision to make. Look, I'm in the mood for some sad poetry. I own, I'm only happy when it rains. I like the sad, sad songs. I am devastated on a personal level right now. Um, very disappointed because of, uh, well, you, you can set goals. You can work towards them. You can try everything in, in your power to reach them. You can get very close to having them. But when the universe itself decides you have to lose, you have to lose. And your old buddy Adrian is losing once again. This Welcome to Strip Cover Lit. I'm Adrian Ford, and this is a poetry discussion which will appear in two separate playlists. Number one being, of course, the poetry discussion playlist, but number two, the Emily Dickinson playlist, a playlist in which we have many, many, many Emily Dickinson poems and commentaries. And this will be another. This is so... Yesterday's video was Emily Dickinson as well. Maybe this was a couple days ago. I can't remember. But one of the points that I made was that when she is at her best, it's either narrative poems. Uh, you have five stanzas and there's a story being told along the way. Or guys, it's the quick hitters. It's the short little ones where she makes one, really, one turn of phrase and is able with those few words to illuminate an entire, an entire portion of life, an, an entire segment of emotion, an entire category of the morose often, but an entire category of what it means to be human. We have just such a poem today. It Dropped So Low in My Regard by Emily Dickinson, known, of course, by the opening line because Emily Dickinson did not title her poems. The poem reads as such. It dropped so low in my regard, I heard it hit the ground and go to pieces on the stones at the bottom of my mind yet blamed the fate that flung it less than I denounced myself for entertaining plated wares upon my silver shelf. <sighs> Woof. It, so, here's, here's the thing. It, whatever it is, what is it? That's it. What is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tell that I am distraught uh, because I keep quoting things that are not poems. I keep quoting pop culture. I keep quoting songs. It dropped so low in my regard. Okay, something, some idea, some goal, some person, some activity dropped so low in my regard. What I had once conceived had fallen off so hard that I heard it hit the ground. Okay, so this ideal fell off so hard, I heard it hit the ground and go to pieces on the stones. Here we go. At the bottom of my mind. Where does this suggest that our speaker is? This suggests that our speaker is walking around on their mind. Probably for the rest of this discussion, I will say her mind, simply because the author uh, was a woman, and it's easier to talk about things in that way. It dropped so low in her regard, she heard it hit the ground and go to pieces on the stones at the bottom of her mind. She's walking around in her own mind, finding these ideas, finding these considerations, Finding these people, 
finding these goals, whatever it is. And then she heard it hit the ground at the bottom of her mind and go to a thousand pieces. Yet, blamed the fate that flung it less. So, whatever this thing is, we will, we will pretend this is the goal of being the greatest poet of all time. Now, obviously, Emily Dickinson did that. But say it was a goal and she felt that she had failed at it. I blamed... So, one of the things that Emily Dickinson could have blamed, and in fact did on many levels... She called a publication the auction of the mind of man. She could have been very, very bitter, and may have been, probably was, very bitter at the gatekeepers of her time. The gatekeepers of my time dropped so low in my regard, I heard them hit the ground and go to a thousand pieces on the stones at the bottom of my mind. Yet I blamed the gatekeepers of poetry for my non-ascendance to the greatest bard of all time, I blamed those gatekeepers less than I denounced myself, okay, now we're getting somewhere, for entertaining plated wares upon my silver shelf. What do we mean by all of that? I blamed the gatekeepers less then I blamed myself and my poetry for entertaining plated wares. What are plated wares? These are silverware, etc., that are plated in a more expensive metal, while a less expensive copper, iron, is underneath the outer part of the silverware. So, I had put these gatekeepers, I had, I had respected them, and I put them on my silver shelf, despite the fact that they were just iron covered with silver. Wah wah wooey. Emily Dickinson here is saying that there are going to be conventions that we hold. There are going to be normalcies in which we revel. There are going to be things in our lives that plainly we respect. Things in our lives that we respect. We have given them the silver plating of respect, and then we set those things on our silver shelf. But they did not belong. What a way to make that point. <coughs> and if they don't belong on the silver shelf, when they drop, if they are, if they are more fragile because they are not a solid thing, they drop from that silver shelf, they will shatter. They will go to pieces on the stones at the bottom of my mind. What a wonderful way to... And, and look, you can do this, you can do this with anything in life. You had a job and you got fired from that job. And you blamed uh, whatever you blamed instead of the fact that the, the workplace itself was toxic. You blamed yourself. Despite the fact that you're being fired had no real amount of anything to do with you. You blamed yourself. But you never should have had that job on the silver shelf. It should have been much lower rank. There is something in your life 
that you are granting power over yourself. And the moment that idea, that ideal, that thing, that pursuit, that goal shatters, you will blame yourself. Despite the fact it is very likely you never had any control over the situation to begin with. Randomness occurs. We are but leaves of grass thrown to an uncaring wind. In every life, a little rain must fall. Yeah. I think that's what Emily Dickinson is telling us here. And as always, it's a wise thing to listen to. It's coming from Emily Dickinson, after all. That is all I have for this poetry discussion. If you like or appreciate what it is that I do here, hitting the like button really does help me out as it tells YouTube to share this video with other Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs. With other literature fans. And if you find yourself here by chance but not design, consider hitting the subscribe button in order to stick around for more literary content. Um, I post poetry every Monday, and there are other read-alongs going on as well. I hope to have you back for the next one.